Hey everyone, out in the shops today, uh, spring has sprung, the um, weather's been fairly nice, uh, been doing a lot of yard work on the grass and the gardens, getting everything cleaned up, ready to go. Um, got a little story for you today. Um, when I was, oh, six, seven years old, eight years old, somewhere in there, um, one of my memories as, uh, as that from that age is going with my father to a slate quarry that a friend of his owned and picking up uh, an engine. And uh, the engine was a John Deere two-cylinder um, power plant engine. It was uh, an L-series engine. Um, it had a little drive on the back of it that you could operate a belt-driven accessory off of. They used it to power water pumps, you know, generators, things like that. It had its own little frame. It was all self-contained. Um, had magneto ignition. It had uh, no other electrics at all and uh, you actually had to crank it to start it. Um, but I, I remember that day going to get that and um, my dad was kind of a my dad was a pretty smart guy, and um, he built things, made things, and um, he was a uh, um, he was one of those kind of guys that could do about anything he put his mind to, and um, he he bought that engine, and he went, brought it home, had it in the garage, and he had an old Marquette stick welder that he'd gotten from the estate of his uncle as he passed away. And he spent the next gosh only knows how long um, out in the garage and he actually built a tractor um, with that engine. The tractor it was in a combination of uh, junkyard parts some stuff I have no idea where what he surfed. Like I say, I was at the most maybe eight years old, um, as I recall. And um, he uh, put a combination together, made a frame um, for it. Had uh, he put a, a transmission behind the drive um, that was, and it was all chain driven, and. Um, I believe the transmission was from a Chevrolet truck. Um, he got a rear axle assembly out of which and I believe was a Ford Falcon um, and he narrowed it, put that in. I don't know, he built a lot of stuff for a front end and I have no idea what it was. The only thing that I do know is that when it came time to put wheels and tires on the front of it, he actually had a, a friend of his that he worked with at the time who had a small single engine airplane like a Piper Cub or something something like that. Well the front wheels and tires on his little tractor were um, off that aircraft. So it was quite a combination of stuff and it took him took him quite a while to get it all together and um, he put some kind of a truck steering box in it and um, like I say this would have been around 1968-1969 somewhere in there and um, I'm not sure exactly I don't remember exactly what it was um, and he got the little tractor done and it worked it uh, went forward and back had uh, brakes on the back that he used with the, the car axle that he had and. Um, He uh, did some other stuff with it. He he put like a little 
it had a hydraulic system on it with a with a hydraulic ram and that hydraulic ram would move a, a cable that raised a, a blade up and down on the front of it like a plow blade. Um, he had that and he had, a, he had a trailer that he pulled around behind the back of it and I recall I remember him doing uh, landscaping around our house with it. He plowed dirt with it and pulled his little trailer and did all this stuff. He may have had other stuff for it, but I just, I just don't remember. So, and then, like I say, I'm not sure when. Um, it was later, around 19, early 1970s. He, uh, he acquired a, an actual John Deere tractor. A, it was, I believe it was a B, if I remember right, it was a high wheel narrow front end B and uh, when he got that tractor he he used that for all kinds of stuff and um, so the little homemade tractor kinda got set to the side he you know he fiddled with it a little bit and uh, but not much and he uh, after that acquired a, an 8N Ford that he used he rather than the John Deere and um, he did all kinds of stuff with that 8N Ford. He made a log splitter for the back of it, and it had all kinds of stuff. But it, all this, as this was going on, the little the little homemade John Deere tractor was basically forgotten, and it was behind their house. There was a large meadow, and on the other side of the meadow was a stand of trees that um, well, went into a several acre parcel. And um, I remember he went out and um, he cut his way in and he, and he cleared a, put a clearing in the, in the trees, back a little bit. And um, he built a, uh, built a pole barn back there that he stored stuff in. He stored, you know, equipment, machinery, stuff like that. And the, the little homemade tractor got put out there and um, pushed into the corner. And... Time went on, life by went on, and um, so I moved out west um, in 1994, and um, then in 2003, my dad passed away, and so two years ago, made the um, came back. Uh, my mom had uh, open heart surgery and uh, came back and was back here for well, a couple weeks, something like that. And um, I made the decision at that point in time that I was going to come home. And um, so we've moved back here. And so got down there, my mom's when we came back and um, I went out back. and. The it was incredible the overgrowth that it was. I mean that thing had grown in. If you didn't know where things were, you'd never be able to find it. I mean it was just that thick with brush and trees that have grown and stuff like that. And uh, so I made a way up at, and the the pole barn had collapsed. Um, it had just you know rotted and fallen down. And um, but I got in there and I got poking around and moved some of it. had a metal roof on it and moved some of the roofing. The little tractor was still underneath there. And um, so I'd, I've always, I did, had made it very clear to everyone for years and years and years and years and years that I wanted that. Because my mom, especially after my dad passed away, he, she, she cleared out a lot of stuff and sold a lot of stuff for, for perfectly good reasons. There's no reason to keep it and have it. Um, but um, I, I always made made mention that I wanted that little tractor, and um, so we get back here, um, and uh, my mom had some people that comes down and does stuff around her, her yard and lawn and stuff like that. And they had they were there one day and had a little excavator, 
and uh, she asked them if she go, they would go out back and get that little tractor out. And um, so they went out with the excavator and they kind of crashed their way in. They got back there and they took it and they pulled the building off it, picked it up and took it in and got it by the um, got it by the edge of her lawn and it sat there. And this was oh towards the end of last summer, I guess they they got it out and. Um, so I went down and I tried to get it with my trailer, of course, and I wasn't able to get it up on. I couldn't get it to slide on the trailer or move or anything like that. So I came, I came home to try again another day and of course, you know, winter set on and, and I had some issues and I did, just didn't get back. So yesterday um, I went back down and uh, through some, the use of some jacking and some blocks and things like that and my the windshield I was actually able to get it up on the trailer so I, I brought the little tractor home and um, I was sitting yesterday talking with my mom and as far as could be figured out that little tractor had set out in that pole barn for about 40 years and my sister thinks it's even longer than that but anyways, so it's been quite a while. So I've got it home. Um, that's the story behind it. Um, it's sitting here uh, in front of me. I'll show it to you in a minute. Um, it's it's in pretty rough shape. It uh, time and the elements have really taken their toll on it. But I've got it here now. Um, and we're going to see see what we can do with it. It doesn't, nothing on it turns. Everything is seized. Um, the, the engine is seized. The front rear wheels are seized. The tires are rotted off of it. The rims in the back are rotted off of it. Um, he used some wood in it, and of course that's all rotted and gone. The seat's falling apart. Um, the transmission doesn't that he's got in there it doesn't you can't shift it it doesn't steer it doesn't do anything I mean it's just everything is just rusted right up and locked up but looking around the engine of course the engine's stuck it doesn't turn and so my thought is we're going to take a take and the engine is what I'm most concerned with on the on the tractor, it's uh, uh, <clears throat> it's the heart of it, and it's what it's what started the whole thing. And um, so I want to see if can do something with the engine, and we'll either um, try to work with the rest of it, or we'll take the engine and we'll put the engine. We'll make something else for the engine. Um, so it's kind of it's kind of cool. It's very bittersweet having it here. And to be honest with you, even if we're not able to get it going, if it's too far gone, um, I'm just glad to have it. We'll keep it here. I'll just put a fresh coat of. Of course, he painted it all like a John Deere tractor, and we'll put a fresh coat. We'll clean it up. Put a fresh coat of paint on everything, and we'll take it out. It can sit in the garden. Um, but. I really want to do something with the engine. So that's the story behind it. Um, it's pretty much, other than some tools that I have around, it's pretty much the the thing I have for my dad. And um, it's kind of cool with the memories that, you know, I remember him building it. And um, it was something he made. And as I stand here looking at it, and I sit here looking at it, it's, uh, it's kind of interesting because he was just such a, he was pretty tight with a dollar. He didn't have a lot of money to spend on stuff like this. So he just made a lot of it. And it's all kinds of, you know, junk metal and this and that. But he got it done and it did work. Um, it's kind of interesting because there's a, there's even had, there's tire chains on the back of it. And the tire chains are rotted off on the bottom. Just rotted right to nothing. So it was returning to the earth. Um, so I'm glad we got it out. I'm glad it's here. And um, hopefully we can do something with it. So uh, I'll take a, let me get you guys out the stand and we'll take a, take a little walk around it and I'll show it to you. 
the the thing about my dad my dad was a was a welder and um, his uh, his welds were nothing ever fell apart they weren't pretty by any stretch of the imagination but uh, they never went anywhere so this is what it is um, like I say it's it's the epitome of a homemade tractor and uh, like I said the, the rubber's rotten everything is just seized and stuck and the only way I could move it around is just on these little carts I was able to slide it on the steel deck of the trailer um, with a winch but I mean in here I just rolled around on these little wheel chocks so this is what it is and I'm suspecting that when the when the building came down it knocked the exhaust off it there was a there was an exhaust stack that stuck up it knocked the stack off of it and the air intake so that it was open um, and it was kind of protected by the roof of the building because it laid on top of it but it was still it was still exposed out there for God only knows how long and looking around it I think that he robbed some parts and pieces off it for other projects I think as I recall this is where he had because it was belt driven and I think this is where his uh, this is where his um, hydraulic setup sat out there. So that pump is gone. The, the ram is still there. You see this ram in here. And, um, and what that ram did is went back and forth and it basically just pulled this cable. And the cable was hooked down here in the front. You see this, this chain is hooked on it. And that chain is what pulled the blade up and down on the front. And uh, like I say, you had, to, you had to crank it to start it. The crank is still there. Um, there was these engines. This engine was a, a a power plant engine. They did. I think used. There's some different variants of this engine, and they used it in different things. There was a stationary power. There was like a frame that went around it, and they also used it as in like the early L and LA series tractors um, from around the late 30s uh, early 40s somewhere in there um, and like I say I don't know if this was I'm suspecting it was just a stationary power engine from the beginning because it's got the unit on the back that does the tractor would have had a long tube and a transmission and this doesn't have that it does actually have the, the belt drive apparatus we'll have to get some stuff off um, I think that's what he controlled with this pedal is he connected and just you could there was a lever that you could engage and disengage the drive for the belt and I think that's what he did with this pedal and like I say the steering nothing nothing turns it's all set right up you can't nothing's it's all locked right up so he put that transmission behind it like I say I think that's a four-speed transmission out of a truck if I remember right there's a lot of junkyard parts used in this um, the rims are rotted right off of it um, I say these are the tire chains on this one they're rusted right off and there was a lot of wood used um, the narrowed rear end, so there's nothing left of anything in the wood. Um, and there's nothing uh, nothing left of a lot of it. But uh, I think he uh, used uh, what he had and he, he bought as little as he needed to. And we'll get it apart. Like I say, it's chain driven. Um, I don't know, you can't how well you can see down in there but it's, the rear end is chain driven off the back of the transmission I don't rem I don't know how we'll have to get all this off and see how he coupled that drive to that transmission um, 
but I do remember that when he I don't know if he made this crank for it or not the crank goes in on a dealer in there and the engine it's not the actual correct um, crank for starting it that it should have it should be a spring loaded affair that you know prevents with the engine kicks back it doesn't break your arm and I do remember him getting clobbered by that handle a few times because the engine would kick back and just nail him because yeah, it, it just it wasn't the right the right one so that's it um, it's got all pretty much everything is here um, the fuel tank is on the top it's in here it goes down in the back and it hooks up there um, that's pretty much it like I say it's, it's a magneto um, of course the radiator I don't know a lot of this stuff isn't probably going to be any good but uh, it's a two cylinder the flathead up there and then the, the just a I don't know it's just a neat old piece and uh, like I said the rest of it I don't know but I do want to get that uh, I want to hopefully we can do something with that engine so I think maybe the first thing we might do is try to get the we'll get the fuel tank off and see if we can uh, pull the head off and see what it looks like uh, the the exhaust manifold is right right full of stuff so I don't know see if we can pull that off there's a side cover down there too I guess I'm assuming that's you can access the valves through that side cover down there I don't know anything about these uh, this is going to be a complete learning experience and I just I, I have no idea how much of it we're going to be able to able to use um, I'd like to say all of it, but I mean, I don't know. We'll see. But uh, I like to get it going. Have something I can, uh, and we'll keep it around and pass it down to my kids. But uh, got some work to do for sure. But this is, to me, this is much more interesting a project than anything else I've got here. So. We'll slide everything else on the back for now. We'll see what we can do with this in amongst our summertime work that we have to do. So that's uh, that's the story. Um, like I say, I'm just I'm glad to have it. Um, it's uh, like I say, if we can't. In the end, if we can't do anything with it, we'll clean it up and we'll paint it green and yellow again. And I can, I'll put it out with my other um, horse-drawn equipment in the gardens, and uh, it can sit there as yard art, but it'll be here. So, anyways, that's it. Um, so, be looking. And we'll get some more videos if we take this apart as we go and see what we got. Uh, as we figure out what we're going to do with it and go from there so that's what we've been doing um, I thank everybody for taking the time to, to watch and listen and uh, I really appreciate all the subscribers and commenting so please uh, you know subscri subscribe and comment Thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever, you, whatever you feel it, it's all appreciated. So thanks, and um, until the next time, take it easy.